Hi, this is Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart, and today is Friday, June 21st, 2013. And uh, I'm doing this video, this is after the close here today on Friday, um, and I'm going to do a quick overview of the indices, just covering really the SPY and the, and the DIA, the, the diamonds and the SPY. Uh, and then I'll jump into a few of the uh, short ideas. Uh, I won't have time in, in video format to cover every uh, short trade idea out on the site. Uh, obviously, I have quite a few. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to look at a few of the highlighted trades real quick over the charts. So let's dig in. We're looking at a SPY daily chart. This chart has been posted um, numerous times on the site lately, so I won't spend too much time on it. Uh, but I wanted to take a look. In fact, let's zoom in um, and take a look at what happened here uh, today in this week. Uh, as, as you know, I've been focusing quite a bit on this channel, um, rising channel in the SPY, which we tagged. That was my first target. These annotations tend to move when I zoom in. So that first target was hit a couple weeks ago, and we bounced off the top of the channel, actually bounced right back to about the midpoint of the channel. Uh, prices consolidated, and then we had that nice breakdown the other day, uh, yesterday on Thursday, a clear breakdown below the channel. And um, this support zone, um, actually now a resistance zone, because remember, once support is broken, it becomes resistance. So this was a support zone that I was focusing on, and we closed slightly below it yesterday, not enough to really uh, clearly say that area was in the rearview mirror. Um, but I like the action today. Of course, I would have liked to seen, uh, you know, continuation on the downside, being that I'm, I'm fully short in the trading account right now. Uh, however, this is perfectly normal action. We had a huge move yesterday, and in, in fact, on Wednesday, a nice down day. So, uh, it, to be expected, uh, a bounce here. Um, can't say that it was 100% expected, but certainly within in the realm of uh, normalcy to have a, the markets bounce back. So, we started the day a little bit lower, uh, moving lower into the morning, and then had a nice bounce into the afternoon. But if you take a look at wh where prices went today, you know, here's that support zone defined by this lower line. Uh, once again, now that's resistance, and prices came back to challenge the bottom of that uh, resistance zone and closed uh, and, and, and went a little lower and closed below it. So, uh, you know, I clearly view this as bearish price action. That's nothing but a retest. You know, and it, we're very over oversold in the near term. Prices came back and have yet to take out that channel. So where do we go from here? Uh, it is quite possible. Of course, anything's possible. But uh, let's say on Monday we could see prices maybe want to test the top of the support zone. Uh, I think in the most optimistic scenario, we would see a uh, possible back test of this channel, although I do not expect that. Um, you know, based on my interpretation of the charts, looking at not just the S&P, but a lot of other indices and, and individual stocks, I think we're going to see the selling uh, continue to accelerate next week. Um, but again, I'm on the um, I'm prepared for anything. Now, a, a back test of that channel may be an objective shorting uh, uh, add-on or, or uh, entry or, or add-on to an existing position. However, if we get much above the top of this support zone next week, I will be a little concerned. And although I'll remain short at that time, I, I don't plan on adding aggressively, uh, especially considering the positions that I already have that I took into the weekend. You know, everybody's different. If I didn't have any positions, I might try short there. But what I'm trying to say is that would uh, go against my expectations at this point, with as far as way, a far, as far as we've dropped below that channel, um, with such impulsive selling, uh, to see this candlestick, to see this very bearish candlestick that we put in yesterday, regained, uh, that would call into question, you know, my my current scenario. So, anyway, something to watch. But again, at, at this point, this is nothing but just a, a a little bounce. In fact, the market still closed negative, so we're not really. I don't think the bulls are cheering today. They might be cheering in the fact that we didn't, you know, build on to the, the losses that we had this morning. But enough on that. So that's where we're at. Nothing but a retest of now resistance. And again, I'll have to change these annotations. I didn't have time to do that before this video. I uh, just wanted to get something out this afternoon for for you folks that are interested uh, to take a look at over the weekend. Uh, this is the Dow Daily. I've showed this chart as well in the past. You know, we have these rising, here's a rising wedge, 
uh, a channel and a very long extended channel. If you look at the scope and duration of this channel, it, it about matches the uh, duration and scope of this wedge here. And you know, look at the look at the correction that ensued after that wedge broke down. Even look at the correction that ensued after this smaller channel broke down. So to expect that that this is the end of the selling, um, I'm not buying it. Uh, my my take, and and again, there's a lot more. Uh, that goes into my analysis than just any one time frame um, and again anything is possible but where we're at today let's just zoom in you know we had also as I mentioned in the in, on the static charts uh, when I posted this diamond chart and, and these spy charts you know we had negative divergences in place under this this very extended channel uh, which we didn't have in place under this one we did have divergences here some divergences down on the MACD so you know, all that taken together leads me to believe that we're in the early stages of a much deeper correction. That's the easiest way to say it. Calling the short-term day-to-day gyrations is difficult. You know, I do my best, but uh, where we're looking at here, we prices closed down, we broke down. Uh, remember, the Dow actually led the SPY on the breakdown. The Dow broke down a couple weeks ago, pushed back, made some retests, crawled up the bottom underside of that channel, and then, of course, in the last couple of days broke down and then went below this support zone that I was focusing on earlier, uh, which again is now resistance. Prices came, you know, quite a bit below it this morning, but then pushed back, but failed to regain even the lower level of that support zone. So my expectation, again, is for continued downside uh, next week. Uh, if we take this back, let's, let's, you know, keep an eye to see if prices break above the top of that channel. I mean, everything works in incremental stages. If you want to look at the bullish scenario, bulls would first have to regain this zone. Um, more importantly, the top of this candlestick here, Thursday's candlestick, and then you have this large gap there. So if prices do get up around that area, uh, I'll really begin to question this move down. But uh, once again, that's not my expectation, and these remain my targets with this uh, support zone right here the third target as my final target or final initial target on this move these targets may be extended uh, depending on the price action over the next few weeks okay that's about seven minutes on the markets I didn't I wanted to spend more time on trade ideas so let's run through these uh, I won't have time to hit every uh, short trade idea uh, I'll just touch on some of these again keep in mind that um, most of these charts have been updated recently on the site when you come into the home page on the right side of the page there's the post by symbol drop down box so you can reference the previous posts and charts on on any trade on the site uh, and this is ALK one of my favorites from a few weeks back uh, we shorted this one on the breakdown of this daily rising wedge pattern we're looking at prices moved down impulsively hit the first target in very short order we had you know a chance to book some or all profits there depending on your trading style since then, prices had consolidated uh, around that first target area, which is common. Uh, that's a reaction. I often say it that I expect a, uh, you know, a a reaction off my target levels, and a reaction can be a bounce or a pause, uh, and that's so that's clearly you know a consolidation. Now this is bearish action here. We had this consolidation, uh, sort of a continuation pattern. If I wanted to draw a a bearish pennant, I'm sure I could draw it there with a downtrend line there, an uptrend line there, sort of a sideways triangle or wedge, if you will, and then a breakdown of that pattern. Um, we found some support near the 200 day moving average, but looking back uh, at the history on ALK, that 200 prices have just sliced through the 200 day moving average, so I'm not putting a lot of stock into that. I, I expect more downside in the, in the days and weeks to follow, and if we jump over as you recall, for those of you in this trade, uh, this is my down, uh, my target is this weekly downtrend line. Uh, I think that prices uh, over the next uh, couple of days, to, well, I should say a few weeks here, uh, we'll probably see at least this um, key uptrend line, which defines the entire bull market run in ALK since late 2008. So that's ALK, and let's jump forward to AVP. Um, Another one that I mentioned is one of my favorites recently. This this is a, a, a case where you have uh, a bearish daily chart 
it lines up perfectly with a bearish weekly chart and as most of you know I'm, I'm very big on, on using multiple time frames and when they come together like that uh, that can make for the perfect trade so on AVP we had this very steep uptrend line uh, some wedging at the top uh, running into smack into nice horizontal resistance here and prices broke down that's where we put the short on somewhere up here and as you can see after the breakdown they consolidated and have since dropped out of that consolidation pattern and have been moving down very sharply and we're quickly approaching that first target so something to keep an eye on I may extend the target on this to T2 but at this time uh, this is my preferred target and based on how quickly this one's falling you know it'll be pretty extended if we get down there next week so I'll probably cover uh, at least part of my position if not all of it so as of now my plan is to cover the full position there at least officially on the site and um, this was the weekly downtrend line which coincided with that daily rising wedge so again when you have um, you know a stock come into a key resistance level on both the daily and the weekly time frames and you have these confirming you know negative divergences and rising wedge patterns uh, it doesn't get much better than that in trading so there's a nice trade for those who caught it congratulations of course it's not over yet anything can happen so do not c become complacent with your stops uh, probably not a bad time to ra ratchet your stops down especially for those of you that don't have the luxury of trading in being in front of a computer all day uh, I wouldn't want to see that stock regain this level here call it 2280 um, really shouldn't get much above that 2265 area but you give it a little bit of a buffer maybe 2280 would be a good stop level at this point uh, CRM CRM has been on for a while I believe we shorted it I can't recall if the entry was based off this daily or the weekly pattern which I'll talk on but we did come down hit this support level uh, pretty well defined support level it was if you look back here follow the cursor we have one two three nearly four five tags and as I mentioned earlier once support or I'm sorry that was resistance at the time once resistance is broken it becomes support so we broke through and now this was a support level and we tested came back tested tested again tested and finally gapped below it so that is a very bearish technical event CRM looks very good on the daily time frame here are the daily targets and again I believe that I harped a lot on the weekly time frame and this is what I'm focusing on on CRM I believe this to be a very uh, have a lot of potentials a long-term swing short <clears throat> and uh, again this one was talked quite a bit in the um, blog and some of the static charts we had this long-term you know four-year uptrend line which broke back in late 2008 um, and ended the bull market in CRM and of course that coincided you know coincided with the uh, you know the bull market run that we had in the broad market up to that point and if you look at this long-term uptrend line it's it's actually extended a little bit longer so we had a recent breakdown these red candlesticks the impulsive selling helps confirm the validity of that trend line when you see a breakdown and the impulsive selling it does show you a lot of eyes were on that trend line and, uh, and if you look at the white lines we have this large broadening, broadening top pattern also known as a megaphone pattern and prices are just now rolling off the top of that so this this chart actually has some pretty long-term bearish implications we can easily see it would not surprise me to see prices hit this final target that I have listed on the weekly frame which is uh, T4 fourth target at 1925 uh, although we'll just have to get there you know take it one step at a time and uh, the only way we're going down that low on CRM in, in my opinion is if the broad market continues to sell down in 2013 and we enter uh, maybe a new cyclical bear market or at the very least have a very deep correction in the broad market otherwise it's unlikely that CRM is going to drop from the $50 level down there but again this is what the charts are telling me and at this point in time um, you know we'll, we'll, we'll just have to see what happens with both CRM and the broad market okay looking down at the counter on this uh, the software I'm using for this video capture I can see that I've hit the 14 minute mark folks so I'm gonna have to talk faster <clears throat> excuse me speed things up a little bit here this is CVX uh, this one I'm really looking at um, on the weekly chart I'm looking at this long-term uptrend line um, this this bearish rising wedge pattern prices rolling off the top after the overshoot 
um, very similar to what happened leading up to the uh, 2008 highs in this stock and then the correction. Um, so again, I pointed out this in the static charts that we have this long-term, uh, you know, 28 plus year trend line coming up. Um, and if you notice, there's been three times in history um, that CVX has gotten this far away. Look at how far away it was back in the, in the, right at the peak of the internet bubble. This is in 1999. Um, and of course we had that following correction there with the bear market. Uh, here's the 2008 peak in CVX and prices came back close when we didn't come all the way down. We still haven't tested that trend line since. Uh, and here we are again. So if you look at the distance here, um, this is what they call reversion to the mean. Here's our uptrend line, multi, multi decade long trend line. And uh, we have this rising wedge pattern, divergences in place. Um, so again, this all goes into the, the bigger picture uh, that, uh, you know, I think the next year in uh, going forward in CVX is, is, is more than likely to be uh, down than up. That's my opinion on CVX. And again, we I pointed this out before. Very simple but effective. Here's a uh, two-day period chart. So this goes back to 2009, and these show uptrend lines. And if you'll notice there, although some are longer than others, uh, the slope on all of these trend lines are about equal, roughly equal slopes. And sometimes you get a breakdown and prices move down immediately, like we had in these two cases. And once in a while you'll have a breakdown and a back test of that trend line at a, at a higher level. Um, but the bottom line is, Every breakdown of these trend lines has led to a, a nice sell-off. This one we had a little fake out here. Um, prices moved back up, but have since been moving down. You could probably also modify that trend line, but I just keep it that way for now. So that's CVX. This is Hertz, HTZ, and uh, this one was updated today earlier with some static charts. Another great example of the daily and weekly charts coming together. Um, to create a, a in my opinion excellent swing short opportunity we had this very extended run by a well defined uptrend line if you look how many touches how many clean touches of this trend line uh, so we had a breakdown this was our short entry in Hertz somewhere around here and we had a back test allowing you know a second short entry anybody who missed the original one or anybody who wanted to add on to the position prices consolidated and have since fallen out of that consolidation range. So as I stated earlier today, I believe this trade has a lot of meat left on the bone. Uh, once again, don't ever fall in love with a trade. Don't don't ever uh, go too big on your position sizing. Don't become complacent with your stops because anything can happen, even to beautiful uh, technical patterns. So um, again, with that being said, it is one of my preferred trades at this time. A lot of meat left on the bone down to the first and even second target which is my preferred target at this time 1705 and if you look at the weekly chart as I said Hertz made this very extended very overbought run smack into its all-time highs which is resistance and on top of that as it right after hitting those that, that resistance level those previous highs the stock broke made a clear breakdown of that uptrend line um, so again there were a lot of other confirming sell signals so you can revisit the old post but uh, one of my favorite trades and still offering uh, an objective entry for for those looking for some short candidates Johnson and Johnson this one was mentioned as a quote unquote lower risk short you know any any stock whether you go long or short in the market does have its risk but as far as volatility uh, and um, you know the biggest risk to shorting a stock or for being long for that matter, is waking up to a very large gap in either direction, or in other words, a gap against you. Now, J&J &J being a, a mega cap company, uh, the odds of you waking up to a 20 or 30 percent gap is slim to none. It's just not going to happen in a large company like that. So, uh, you know, you're, uh, this is a relatively safe short. It's emphasis on the word relatively. And uh, what happened? We shorted this one on this very steep ascending channel. Uh, we had a breakdown here. We hit the support level, which I had pointed out before, had a reaction there, a small bounce, consolidation and bounce. And now prices have come down to close right on that support level today. So again, if you're already long J&J, &J, your next sell signal uh, to add on to the position, 
I'm sorry, if you're already short J and J, your next sell signal to add on would be on a break below this support level. And uh, if you're looking for a new short entry, it still has plenty of room to the downside. Uh, again, not not huge as far as percentage gains. Not bad. You know, we're at 83.20. Uh, here's my first target here. Second target at 73.20, uh, 73.60. So nearly a you know $10 downside on an $83 stock. That's that's substantial. Um, and you can you know easily use a full position size on a company like J and J. Uh, here's the weekly chart. What happened here is this stock uh, had made a couple attempts at breaking out to its all-time highs. Here's the previous highs in the stock. And once it did, it had this very odd, you know, almost parabolic straight run up. Uh, and I've only seen runs like that a few times where it, it seems that the high frequency trading machines, com you know, computerized trading, whatever it is, the program trading on on the street it seems to me that this this was a short squeeze when you see these stocks walked up like this I saw this happen to CMG a few years ago very similar before a I forget what the correction was I think it was a 40 or 50 percent plus correction following that and we caught you know most of that on the downside so I, I do believe that uh, a lot of short interest has been cleared out of this stock uh, I should say I know that for a fact I've checked it and uh, I think it's a good chance that that stock will come down especially if the market uh, you know experiences a, a pretty deep correction in 2013 through the end of the year like I think it might um, we can then come down to back test possibly to back test these these uh, recent highs a breakout level here and if you notice we have this uptrend line off the 2009 lows which this is a line that I added here you know, if we came down, it would not be a straight line down. There'd be some zigzags and counter trend bounces along the way. But uh, if it took a few months to do it, uh, that would tell us there's the end of January right here. You know, it would come in right about these intersecting uh, support levels, the uptrend line and, and that breakout. Again, folks, that's a long way away, and I would not be short the entire way down. Uh, my trading style is, you know, I'll, I'll use a daily chart to time my entries and exits and either lighten up on the position sometimes I'll even trade a counter trend bounce on the on the on a short trade you know off a support level that I think we're gonna have a decent bounce and then jump back in at higher levels and continue to ride the short down so for now these are all I'm looking at on J&J &J. these are my targets okay looking at the timer uh, this will be the last one I'll try to break this up and, and, and do an additional video hopefully getting in uh, some of the other ideas that I wanted to the short trades that I'd like to highlight uh, but I'm, I'm 22 minutes into this video so we'll wrap it up with KBH KBH is a home builder stock broke down here a while back at a nice sell-off and then has since climbed within this uh, contracting channel slash wedge type pattern and broke down found support at this horizontal support level you can see quite a few reactions off that support level there and has now broke down below uh, a lot like the broad market and, and came to close just below that level which is now resistance so KBH uh, it's an active trade on the site but it looks like an objective short entry here uh, of course let's see what happens Monday uh, but assuming the stock stays below this level um, it looks like uh, to provide an objective short entry there uh, I'd probably put my stop if I were to short now I, I already have a position here and if I add on I would probably lower my stop to right above the top of that gap there call it around 2015 ish 2020 and uh, here's the first target my preferred target is actually this 1320 level and uh, take a look at the weekly chart real quick you can see the KBH came up found some resistance this isn't the most solid resistance level but it does come in off this reaction high and some some prices there so uh, either way I think KBH is in need of a breather and so I'll stop here hope you guys enjoyed this and again I'll I'll try to get uh, another video or and or some static charts out on some of the other uh, highlighted trades uh, as soon as possible thank you